In this video, we will describe how we're using next-generation sequencing to identify aptamers. The ability to provide both dynamic and deep sequencing enables us to identify the best possible aptamer sequence for every project. What is the difference between traditional sequencing and next-generation sequencing when applied to aptamer discovery? The difference is not just more sequences. With traditional aptamer discovery, selection proceeds until a certain point. Then, after the last round, the library is cloned and representatives are sequenced. With the new deep dynamic sequencing, we have the capacity to sequence multiple rounds from the selection process simultaneously for the same cost. This means that we have not only more sequences to analyze from the last round, but also sequences from every selection round on the path. So why is this an advantage? The ability to sequence each selection round represents a profound change in our approach to analysis. With traditional endpoint sequencing, our analysis is entirely based on the relative frequency of each sequence in the final selected library. With dynamic sequencing, we are able to analyze the changes in the frequencies over selection rounds as well as the final frequency. If we consider the frequency of a sequence as equivalent to its concentration in the library, then the traditional approach provides an estimate of this concentration at the final round. Our new dynamic approach allows us to measure these concentrations in all rounds and the rate at which these concentrations are formed. This means that we no longer need to assume that the selection has reached equilibrium in order to identify the best aptimus. We have discussed in other videos that we are not selecting entire sequences. We are selecting for the presence or accumulation of motifs within sequences. A motif means a contiguous sequence of nucleotides. The number of nucleotides in a motif can vary. Often, we are looking at motifs that are 6 to 10 nucleotides in length. We analyze the sequencing data to identify motifs that occur much more frequently than they should if the sequences were just random. This results in the identification of families of sequences that all contain the same motif. A short motif will be present initially in more sequences than a longer one. If the short motif binds to a given target, then the higher initial frequency of this motif will provide it with a selection advantage over longer motifs that may bind even better. Both types of motifs will increase in proportion in the library over selection rounds, but the shorter motif will dominate the library before the longer one. The longer motif will, however, be increasing in proportion at a faster rate than the shorter motif. This means that while it may not dominate the final selected library, we can identify it as being better than the shorter motif because it is increasing in proportion faster. We need to do deep dynamic sequencing in order to be able to see this. Another aspect that follows the same logic is the accumulation of more than one motif in the same sequence. This will occur at a lower frequency in the initial library, but will increase in proportion more rapidly than sequences with only one motif. This is just a start in terms of understanding the additional power of dynamic deep sequencing. With this approach, we're also no longer limited to single lines of logical selection steps because we are not limited to analyzing the last round. We can introduce the concept of branch or non-linear selection strategies. One of the key potential strengths of Aptimers is our ability to select for specificity. Now we can do this with branch strategies. We perform selection against the desired isoform of the target molecule, protein or cell. Then we take aliquots of the selected library and pass them along different selection paths. We then compare how the sequences respond to these paths and we can identify those sequences that clearly respond to counter selection and those that do not. This enables us to identify a range of sequences necessary to optimize between affinity and specificity. 
Another area where nonlinear selection represents a powerful improvement is in the selection of aptamers for whole cells. The problem with whole cells is that they contain such a large amount of possible binding sites. It is difficult to drive selection for a specific transmembrane protein associated with a cell type. We overcome this problem by introducing dual selection for the target protein and the whole cell. In this case, we are looking for motifs that exhibit the same positive selection response to both targets. Another opportunity for branch strategies is an exploration of a robustness of the sequences and the various conditions that may be experienced in a diagnostic environment. We can select under different conditions pH, temperature, buffer components, different matrices, and determine which sequences will be the most robust even before we start performing binding assays. We're looking here for those motifs that maintain the trajectories over selection rounds across all selection conditions. These may not be the best aptimers for each condition, but the aptimers that will work best across all conditions. These are just some general ideas in terms of the types of customized selection strategies that we have developed. We design specialized selection strategies for each client and work to identify client needs in terms of the performance of the aptimer in their application. Together, we develop a selection strategy that will result in the identification of the best aptimer for you. Remember, you get what you select for. It is very difficult, if not impossible, to change a bad binder into a good one once the selection has been completed. A key difference between New Ventures and other companies in this space is that we do not use modified nucleotides in our selections. In our opinion, modified nucleotides may work better, they may result in aptimers with better binding affinities, but they will also cost a lot more. Instead, we focus on the identification of the best possible natural nucleotide-based aptimers, so that given success, you will have a ligand that you can commercialize cost-effectively. It has been our experience that patent examiners would limit the claims on your aptimer application to the sequences that are identified. By identifying many more sequences and characterizing them more richly, you will expand the breadth of your claim and make it much more difficult for other groups to invent around your intellectual property position. We are very excited about our use of next generation sequencing with Aptima Discovery. In this video, we hope to provide a glimpse of why this is such an important advance to this science. If you have any questions about this or would like to discuss a potential project with us, please contact us. We respond to all inquiries as rapidly and as fully as possible. We are working to be the best Aptima Discoverer company in the world.